Folks, if you want to change what you're getting, you got to change what you're doing. And if you want to change what you're doing, you have to change what you believe because what you do is based on your beliefs. The reason you act the way you act, you do the way you do, that you choose the way you choose are because of your beliefs, right? Period. So you got to change those beliefs if you want to change those actions. You're not just going to change the actions permanently without changing your beliefs. And then the beliefs change your actions and the actions change your results. You know me, I just like to listen and answer questions. You know, if, if, if this is a teaching moment when it comes to, you know, the three things you guys want to focus on to improve everything in life, not just sales. You want to focus on your mindset, your skill set, and your habits. The skill set part, again, is just practice, man. You, you got to practice, drill, rehearse. That's all it is. You know, there's a lot of people out there that are really good at what they do, and, and everybody forgets that they spent so much time getting good at that. So now we come along, we're like, well, we'll never be that good. Well, you won't be if you don't, number one, if you have that attitude, which is mindset. Number two, if you don't spend the hours practicing. And then the third one is habits, man. Mindset, skill set, habits. That's all you got to focus on. If you can focus on those three things, you're going to crush anything that you touch. Anything. But too many people are out there trying to figure out what to do, so they go this direction for, you know, two weeks. Recording week. in progress. For two weeks. They don't, they don't have any um, success, and then they quit, and then they go this direction for two weeks, then they don't have any direction. Then they get depressed and don't do shit for two weeks. You know, all this time's going by, and they can't figure it out. And it's like, dude, this isn't rocket science shit. He's got muted, but somehow he pressed mute. Keep going. Somehow this isn't rocket science shit, boys and girls. So, so I mean, I can take it anywhere you'd like. Uh, I, I just kind of like to, you know, provide value where they need it because, you know, I don't know what your problems are. I, I still want to send it, it's again, to you, Brad, and Sam. So it's still something that is happening with me. Like I said, it's still taking it too personal. Now, where I'm trying to do is, okay, so we'll stop taking it personal. Um, that's like telling me, okay, we'll just deadlift the 315 pounds. I, no, I can't isn't. even properly no, deadlift with just the bar. No, it isn't. Okay. It's a decision. Well, what, it's a decision, bro. You're, you're, you're mentally, uh, uh, weak. Yeah. So like you, you, you have to, you have to understand one thing, dude, listen, you can't make everyone happy. Do you understand that? I know it. I don't fully understand it. It means you can't make everybody happy, dude. Period. You cannot make everyone happy. There's no one on the planet that can make everyone happy. Jesus didn't make everyone happy. Okay? You cannot make everyone happy. So once you realize, I can't make everyone happy, okay, good. Then that's step one. Step two, now you have to choose who you're going to make happy. Now, when you start to, you know, boggle your mind about how many people that could be, how many sides, how many you know, factions that could be, you, 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 here, I'll just give you a shortcut what I rested on. If I can't make everyone happy, then I got to choose. And if I can't, you know, continuously choose, why not just choose me? Why? Because I'm the only one that can, I, I can control. I'm the only one that I can decide and, and, and control ultimately. So I can't make everyone happy. I can't control anyone else. So why not me? Why not make me happy? Now, the reason why a lot of people cannot choose me to be happy is because, dude, you're not worth being happy. Your parents have told you, your friends have told you, your siblings have told you, your employers have told you, everybody told you, dude, you're here to sacrifice. You're here to, to, to kiss everyone else's ass. You're here to serve. So it feels weird when we put ourselves first. And I tell people all the time, man, I am the most important person in my life. So there's nobody that I can think of in my entire life that is more important than me. Now, some people think that's arrogant. Well, I don't give a fuck what people think. And that's where you need to go. Why? Because, dude, I know I'm up helping people every day. I'm a good dude. I'm not freaking a prick in any stretch of the imagination. I'm not greedy. I'm not fucking mean. I'm not any of those things. So I don't give a shit what you think or what she thinks or what he thinks. Now, again, do I want you guys to like me? Well, sure, everyone wants to be liked. Do I want everybody to say, yeah, that was awesome. But I already realized, and this is where, where I, why I don't take it personally. I can't make everyone happy, no matter what I do, bro. I could go help a starving child and someone will have a problem with it, okay? You can't make everyone happy. So once you accept that, you go, okay, now choose, okay? Well, I choose me, why? I'm the only one I can control. Okay, when you choose you to make happy, 
now you now you got to start fucking just right realizing that everybody else's opinion is irrelevant. Now you can factor them, but it's irrelevant, bro. Like I don't I, like again Sam Taggart, you know, cool dude running around the world, like loving life. If he called me and said, "Brad, here's what I think you should do," I'm not going to take it personally because, dude, he's not me. He doesn't know me. He doesn't know everything about me. He doesn't know anything really compared to what I know about me. So why would I take what he has to say personally? You know why I take his shit personally? If I do, because I don't have the confidence. I don't have the, the security in my own validation. So I need his validation. I need Sam to like me or say something that I need. I need him to say because, you know, I need him to say it. So if you're in that case, guys, what you have to do is very simple. You got to basically build your self-worth. It's It takes time. It's not an overnight thing. You commit to do what you say you're going to do. First thing you should do is forgive yourself. That takes a five-second discussion with yourself in a mirror. You forgive yourself, right? Just like you would if you were apologizing to a friend that you wanted to repair a relationship with. You forgive yourself. Okay. Secondly, you commit to do what you say you're going to do from this point forward and you do it. And remember, it's very important that you do that. Okay, you want to pride yourself on you do what you say you're going to do. You say you're going to do it, you're going to do it. Now, if people get anxiety from that, just remember, don't, don't agree to everything, man. You don't have to agree to everything you agree to. You just do because you feel obligated. Stop feeling obligated. Okay, so commit to do what you say you're going to do. That's just a decision, okay? It's not hard. It ain't like benching 315, dude. Quit bullshitting yourself. And that's another thing. Y'all are fucking the best salespeople in the world when it comes to selling yourself out of the shit you want. Why don't you apply that towards freaking making money? You know, this morning I was going to cold plunge or not cold plunge. I'm sitting there selling myself all the reasons. I even Googled, is cold plunging really good for you? Because I was hoping I'd find an article that says, no, it isn't. There, I'm not cold plunging. See, I'm selling myself. If we can put that kind of fucking energy into selling our products and services, we'd be top salespeople. Okay, but we sell ourselves. So you got to commit to do it. It's just a decision, man. You make a decision. I'm going to do what I say I'm going to do. Then every day you want to set small goals, small little step goals, so you can rack up wins all day. You know, brushing my teeth is a win. I do it every morning. I'm winning. First thing I get out of bed, man, I'm winning. Then I, then I say, hey, I'm going to fo go focus on my health a little bit. Dude, I focus on my health. I'm winning. Then I'm going to focus on relationships. What do I do? I find find or identify five people I'm going to text or communicate with that day to just reach out. Why? Because I don't want to be the dude that only reaches out when I need something. How many of you people have somebody that whenever they ring or call or text, you, you know before you even look they want something? We all do. Do you want to be one of those people? Not if relationships are important to you. So basically, you, you, you pick five people. And then you shoot them a text, basically just says, miss you, appreciate you, you know, how can I help you? Can I do anything for you? Well, no, you know, cool, no problem. But, but you do that. So you're not one of those people that call only when you need something. But that's ultimately focusing on, on relationships. Why? Because I realize, dude, relationships are where revenue comes from. It's where referrals come from. Like if you want more money, other people have more money. You need other people to make more money. The reason you don't have what you want right now is because you don't know the right people. If you knew the right people, you'd sell more instantly. You'd have more instantly. So how do you get more people? Well, you got to shake hands, introduce yourself, increase your network. So, so how do you do that? Well, again, you introduce yourself, but then people start going back to, well, I don't have anything to say. What if they think I'm stupid? Then they get back in that insecurity and they don't do it. So to, to build your self-esteem, you forgive yourself, you commit to do what you say you're going to do, you start racking up the wins on a regular basis, and then you start walking around like you actually deserve a little bit more, and you'll start acting like it. And as soon as you do, someone's going to tell you to shut the fuck up. Someone's going to put you back in your place. Someone's going to say, dude, you, you think you're awesome all of a sudden because you've been working out for fucking three days, bitch, dude. And then some of them will be nicer about it. They'll be like, I liked you better the other way. You know, are you really, are you really wanting to do this? So, so the step, the fourth step you do to get, you know, basically more self-worth is you get rid of all the idiots 
and, and negativity around you, even if it's your mom, even if it's your brother, somebody keeps questioning your ability to do something, if they're not encouraging to you, get them out. Now, again, I'm not talking about cr constructive criticism either. If I'm your friend, dude, I'm going to tell you you got a booger in your nose. I'm going to tell you that you need to freaking start working out. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. That's not negative. Okay. Negative is, is doubting that you can do something and, and basically voicing my opinion on how doubtful I am you're ever going to make it. Telling you that, that, you know, in my opinion, you need to start working out, especially when you already know you do. Okay. That's constructive criticism. So I'm not saying everybody has to kiss your butt in order to stick around you. But you definitely don't want negative people around you. You want support and encouragement around you. Okay? So that's step four, getting rid of all the negativity. And then step five is map out, visualize what success looks like. It's pretty simple to do. You sit there and give it some time and really think and mull it over. And again, most people don't really know where what true success looks like. So the first thing I would say if you want to find it okay, or build it is you have to see it. So see, you know, take the time and figure it out. What, is, what does success look like? And it doesn't have to be, you know, the end of life success. Like I, I hope to be much more successful at the end of my life than I am at the end of this year. So it doesn't have to be at the end of the life, man. What about just right now? Like what does success look like to you? So you know if you're heading towards it and you know if you're heading away from it. If you don't know what it looks like, it's not mental. How are you supposed to know if you're moving towards or away? Because every day I ask myself, does this move me towards or away? Does, does hanging out at fucking Lake Powell for six days move me towards my goal or away from my goal? Well, I don't know. What's my goal? So you got to know exactly what, your, what success looks like. So you map out and visualize exactly what it looks like, right? And every day you, 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 you visualize what you would feel like if it was already real. In other words, you actually assume it's already real. And then you read every day, dude. Did you read today? No, I hadn't uh, read today. I was listening to an audible. Okay, so to me, that's reading. You know, read, okay. read and get new information every day. It's pretty simple. You get new information every single day. Whether you believe it or not is irrelevant, man. You just need new information. Why? Because you're improving yourself. You're improving your knowledge. You're impl improving. Okay, you want to get better, don't you? You want to do better, don't you? Yeah, if you want to... This counts for that too, so... If you, if, if you, if you, well, it depends on who's talking. Okay. You can't be blind leading the blind. You can't read the shampoo bottle while you're taking a shit and consider that new information. You got to get good content, repetition, practice, and accountability. So in this case with Sam and, and guys like me and Andy and people like that, it does count because obviously we're giving some good information out, but I'm talking about specifically reading a book. Okay, pick up a fucking book. Like, what the fuck is wrong with a book? Pick up a book. Read 10, 20 pages every single day. Improve yourself. And that's what happens. And then over time, believe it or not, you start thinking a hell of a lot more because of that reading. You start thinking a hell of a lot more. And that's what a lot of people need to do is think. Okay, so you think a lot more. And all of a sudden, you start to believe other and new things and that's what changes your actions and that's what changes your results folks if you want to change what you're getting you got to change what you're doing and if you want to change what you're doing you have to change what you believe because what you do is based on your beliefs and if and, and if you don't understand that dude raise your hand because that's the bottom line the reason you act the way you act you do the way you do that you choose the way you choose are because of your beliefs Right? Period. So you got to change those beliefs if you want to change those actions. You're not just going to change the actions permanently without changing your beliefs. You want to change somebody's, you know, behavior, change their beliefs. So trust me, the only way to change your belief is to get new information. So if you know your beliefs need to change, hey, mute everybody, Sam. Um, it, it, so every day you're getting that new information so you can so you can constantly be thinking and, and, and ultimately what it does is it change your beliefs. And then the beliefs change your actions and the actions change your results. So it's really not that difficult to do. It takes a little time. You know, you start, you, you forgive yourself today right after this phone call. You commit to do what you say you're going to do. You start racking up the wins the rest of the day and every day. You rack up wins. Why? Because, dude, confidence is the memory of winning. 
If, if, if you get in a fight with a hundred dudes, big, small, doesn't matter, and you beat all their asses ridiculously, some dude walks up to you and says, you want to fight, you kind of snicker and you're like, you know, sure, because you're confident now. Confidence is the memory of winning. So you, you want to win a lot. So you just start racking up those wins. You decide what a win is. Someone else doesn't get to decide. If someone told you, Raphael, brushing your teeth is hardly a win. Maybe for them, but for me it is. Okay, so I win every single morning when I wake up. Okay, working out is a win. Reaching out is a win. Focusing on five things that drive revenue is a win. Okay, reading is a win. Eating healthy is a win. Like I've, I've set my wins pretty low. Why? Because I want to win all day, dude. And that's why I walk around feeling like a winner. So if you do that starting today and you do that every day, but about 30 to 60 days, consistency, dude, you're not going to do it overnight consistency. You do that for 30 to 60 days, dude, you start, you start mentally thinking, I deserve more than I have. You start to look around and think, I can do better than this. I should have a nicer car. I should have a nicer place. I should have a better relationship. I should have a nicer boyfriend. I should have a nicer wife. Like you start thinking differently, man. You start act, you start feeling like you deserve more and that shows you that it's working. And that's why it's important that you get around the negative people, get cut them out because they'll bring you right back down. And then you start visualizing and mapping out what success looks like. And every single day you ask yourself, am I moving towards or away? Everything's a decision, folks. Everything's a choice, right? The choices you make determine the roads you take. So it, you have to figure out, dude, it's just a matter of fucking making choices, man. This is not rocket science shit. What choices am I making? And by the way, those are your habits. So you start making better choices by just factoring every little choice, every little second. Ask yourself, does it move me towards or away? And when it says away, it moves you away. Don't make the choice. You need, yeah. And then when you say, hey, that's like asking me to lift 700 pounds. No, it isn't, dude. That's a cop out. Okay, this is a choice, man. You can make it. Dude, if you, if, you built, if, if you built the right relationship during the conversation, yeah. you're more than, more than, you've more than earned the right to ask for referrals. They just bought from you for Pete's sake. Yeah. Why wouldn't you think that they would automatically refer you other people that they might think would buy from you as well? Why did they buy from you if they wouldn't refer you? So guess what? As soon as you're done, because again, you call them back later, the, the relationship now is gone. Yeah. Maybe the, the system ain't working. Like, come on, dude. The best time to ask for a mother effing referral is the second you make the sale. Except when it's consummated, not during. Make the sale. Congratulate them. Yeah. Da, 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 da. And then say, oh. And by, I call it, oh, by the way. Oh, by the way. You know, I used to do it depending on what industry I was in. When I was selling cars, everyone hated giving car salesmen referrals. And, and it was very difficult for car salesmen to get referrals. Why? Well, because nobody wanted a car salesman calling their friends and their moms and their yeah. brothers. So when you ask for referrals, they'd just be like, meh, and not many people were successful getting them. So what I did is I realized that, because again, I mean, like, dude, if the front door is not open, go to the back door. If the back door is not open, check the garage. The garage isn't open. Look through the windows, man. Maybe one of them's open. Like, come on, you can get in that some bitch house if you want to. Yeah. So, so what I used to do is say, okay, they don't want to give them voluntarily. Let me think. They don't want people bugging their people. Hey, let me ask you a question, Robert. What if we flip the script? Now, this is cars. It works. Solar probably won't work. But I said, what if it? What if I did this? What if I asked them for five people who want to sell me their car? And so I walked up to a customer and I said, hey, I'm trying to get the used car manager job and I got to build the inventory in order to do that. I'm looking to buy cars. Do you know anybody that would sell their car if I were, to willing, if I were, were willing to pay them top dollar? And they go, pretty much everyone. And I go, good, write down five names and phone numbers of somebody, what they drive that you know personally, and I'm going to call and offer them top dollar for their car. And by the way, if I if they end up selling it to me, I'm going to send you 200 bucks for dinner. Sound good? And dude, everybody started giving me referrals. Why? Because they, I was going to buy their car, not hound them to buy a car. I was going to give them money. No one minded anymore. 
So when it comes to solar, again, they just bought something that they believe is going to lower their fucking uh, power bill, take them off the tit of the power company. Ruben, 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 don't be, don't be cheesy, dude. Don't be a, you guys, whatever you do, stop being cheesy. Okay. Cheesy lines don't work anymore. Okay. It's 2023. Human beings work now. Okay. You, people buy from you because they like you. They don't need to buy from you. There's a million people to buy from. Name something that you need somebody to buy. Hey, you want to spend an hour a week with me helping you become a business badass? Well, check out my group in the link below. I believe they have, I believe they have nine speakers, um, four with an hour and the rest with 20 minutes each. So, yeah. so, 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 like be, so be prepared to listen to my ass for an hour. No, I think, I think, uh, you know, they're got they're, they're going between 40 minutes to an hour for like four or five of them. And then, and then the rest are getting 20 minutes. How do you put David Goggins and Gary Vee? Anyway. That's what I want to know, minutes. dude. Anyway. Hey, but, but reality, it, it's, it's, it would be an impossibility to put all those speakers on in one day event. Hey, but anyway. Great event. It's going to be fun. That's the Utah one. Hey, the VIP uh, party. Hey, the VIP ticket, the VIP party to that thing is what I would highly recommend anybody in here. That I got that. Well, that's the one I'd recommend because you really do show up to Keaton's house. We are all really actually there having fun. I mean, you're you're talking to everyone who will be on that stage. Like Goggins, I guarantee he'll be there. Gary V will be just sitting there by the fire just bullshitting. Like, dude, that's the party to go to. And then we go to the event next day. What would yeah. you recommend? Um, so I, I never spent ten thousand dollars on Messi before. I held ten thousand dollars in my hand for the first time yesterday, <laughs> and um, I got the ticket. What would you get? Would you have any advice for me on? Yeah. Like, um, I mean, I've met you a few times, and uh, you, you want well. you want my advice? Me. You want my advice? Uh huh. Don't fanboy. Whatever you do. Just walk around, mm -hmm. like if, like if, like if, let's say you see, I don't know, Sam Taggart in real life, you're like, Sam, I love you. You know, people are like, okay, but they immediately put you in now a fan, you know, type situation. You want to use that $10,000 to actually build relationships with people there. So if you walked away with fucking five key relationships, which is easy to do at a party, if you're not fanboying and acting a fool, your breath don't stink, Okay. You, you, you know what you want to say, you know, don't be a goofball. Don't be Raphael. <laughs> build relationships. That's all I'm telling you. Build relationships. When you say, well, what can I ask him? You got to, what do you mean? What can you uh, ask him? Like, like you want to ask him, for example, you know, secret questions. Cause none of us have the secret answers. So like, you're not going to be like, damn, if I'd have just asked him this one question, I would be rich right now. That's never going to happen. No one's going to give you some magical answer at a party. Okay. The, and by the way, keep in mind, like a lot of people want to talk to everybody. So you're going to be, you know, depending on how many people are there, which is why there won't be that many because not many have the balls, the huevos to drop 10 G's just to go to some damn party. So first of all, you should be proud of yourself for even be, being willing to do it. Next, you're smart enough to ask the question, hey, how do I get most value out of that party? The best way to get the value out of the party is to show up and ju just genuinely not want anything. Just want to mm. get to know them. And, and by the way, don't be nervous. Don't be nervous. Like they're just fucking people. So like, I can't believe it half the time. Sometimes, you know, I'm in an airport. Someone will walk up and literally their lips are twitching. Like they're about to cry and they say, I changed their life. And I'm like, well, what did I say, man? Like, I, like, that's awesome. What did I say? And they're, and they're like, you know, acting like I'm fucking Leonardo DiCaprio or something. And I'm like, calm down, buddy. Like, I, I'm, that's what I'm thinking in my head. Like, calm down. But to me, but to them, I said something that literally caused them to change their own life, which is funny because they're, they're basically projecting the credit they should be giving themselves because they did it. They're projecting that credit onto me. And all of a sudden, I'm like sitting there almost awkwardly embarrassed. Why? Well, what did I say? What did I say that was so magnificent that changed your life? And and they say, you came out on stage and you told everybody to brush their teeth. And I said, yeah. And he said, when he started brushing his teeth, like twice a day, fucking his whole life changed. 
And I'm like, wow, awesome. That's good, brother. High five. And then I realized, man, there's some regular old folks out there, aren't there? Like I, have, I assume everybody in this room thinks like I do, knows what I know, does what I do. It's weird. It's almost like you got to remember sometimes, dude, there's just people out there that have no effing clue. Like you didn't know to brush your teeth, people. Come on. Everybody here brushes their teeth, right? Because if you if you don't, if you don't brush your teeth, guys, do it for a couple times a day. Right? Try it in the morning before you leave your house and then before you go to bed, do it again. So when you go to bed, brush them and then wake up and brush them. Don't worry about the rest of the day. Chew some Next gum, part. chew some gum, carry some breast spray, right? And you'll be okay in the in the mouth department. But you don't want to be some stinky ass with teeth that looks That's like Brad, you just Brad, gargled Brad's butter. Brad's got a brand coming out. Will you guys support Brad and his new <coughs> car marsh brand? It's called Brad Breath. Listen, uh, listen. We, we, we're, not, we're not going that route anymore. Yeah, we like Brad Breath. It's a Banaka brand. No, but I mean, if you're going to have good really breath, good. it's synonymous with Brad Breath instead of bad breath. But hey, what's the opposite of bad breath? Brad Breath. But that's yeah, but yeah. that's lame, dude. I don't I ain't doing that. I told you. I'm just I'm just gonna go get a little steak in the Listerine right. company. But guys, nobody nobody wants to walk around looking like he got a mouthful of Indian corn. Okay. Um, next question. That's good. <laughs> hey, dude. Hey, hey. Let me give you guys a quick story. One time, I was at a freaking event. It was called Driven, and I literally, because dude, people were paying like two thousand dollar tickets to be in there and I'm talking and I said I said something about you know fresh breath and you know you got to look good as good as you can and and uh I said if somebody is willing to pay two thousand dollars to come here and listen to this nonsense and they got all fucked up teeth like they're doing their priorities are wrong like you ain't got two grand to come here if you got a fucked up mouth like go to the damn dentist and give it to them start making payments and literally and literally, two years later, I spoke at the same event, and some dude comes up, and he's got braces on. And I, I don't know that that's the dude that was in the audience that day, but he comes up, and he freaking, his lips are twitching. He's telling me how much I'm changing his life. And I said, well, what did I say? And he said, dude, you, you made me think about how I was spending my money, and I was sitting there listening to you with fucked up teeth. And so I, so I went to the dentist and fucking bang. And dude, I saw him like four years afterwards, dude. He's walking around successful as hell. Big old smile, all happy and shit. Big old smile. Dude, you ever see those people with the messed up teeth and when they go to laugh, they'll be, hey, you, they won't really want to smile much. You ever see those dudes? I'm telling you, dude, give them a hug and tell them, come on, dude, you realize dentists take payments, don't you? Like, let's get that shit fixed. Well, everyone's like, aha, that's funny. That's what Bradley, he's so surfacey. Dude, I'm telling you the truth, Okay. I, I ain't gonna listen to nobody with a, with with seven missing teeth. Like I'm thinking, dude, you 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 ain't got the sense to fucking replace your teeth. I'm I can't talk to you much. Now, if there's some freaking toothless some bitch on social media, you're gonna hate this clip. There, he gonna be like, fuck you, Brad. She it. Well, again, I probably won't be never doing business with them anyway. But you know, hey, I apologize for trying to help. Sam, real quick. Uh, I just wanted to recap what's the, the to take away and to put into practice what you just said is basically I'm going to listen back to the recording but the big takeaway is basically the truth can be malleable right um, no that is the, that ain't what he said because the truth is the truth no. the truth is, okay. Okay. the it's truth can be truth malleable <laughs> okay. no, it's, it's, it's take That's... other people's truth hey Ryan, let me make sure. Hey, Sam, let me make sure. Let me make sure you said this correct. Yeah. Yes. Now, what you just said was, you know, you can bend the truth and break some I'm, laws. No, no, I'm saying people's feedback when they when they say something to you, and it's their truth. They're like, like Brad. Let's take Brad's teeth thing, and it's like his truth is, hey, you have ugly teeth and you have bad breath, and it's like, okay, there's there's subjective, which is. No, they're not, dude. That's no, no, society. No, no, you got on. messed up teeth. You got messed up teeth. Everybody's judging you. Everybody's judging you. Okay, there's truth to this. So, so let me. Let me That's let me, not Brad's let me, truth. That's societal truth. So, is your breath bad? Yes or no? That's truth. That's like 
You well, no, that's subjective. That's like subjective. Good. That's subjective. Because who who's deciding what bad smells like? Who's the who's the judge? Okay, you have messed up teeth, right? You're like, oh, his teeth are. Ugly. No, you either have messed up teeth or you don't. Right. You so don't have. Like, okay, my teeth bad breath is subje subjective. Okay, so I'm just using this as an example. So then, so then, you kind of say, okay, am I taking this personal? And Brad's shit talking on my teeth. I can now let my ego be like, okay, I'm now a piece of shit because I have bad breath and bad teeth. Or I can say, okay, that's the feedback that I keep seeming to receive. And there is a societal, like, opinion on this, which is true. Like, my, I would agree with this truth. And a lot of people probably would agree with this truth. But maybe it's some trash. Maybe it's, like, acceptable. I don't know. Hey, mute yourself. Just a little. Whoever's talking about Let's listen to Liz. Her conversation is better than this one. Come on. Um, okay, so what I'm saying is, there's a common, there's a common truth here, right? Like, I think, I think what Brad's saying is probably true. And I think everybody on this call is agreeing when you have somebody with missing three teeth and their bad breath, and it is hard to have a real conversation and take them serious. Like, we would all agree with this, right? But what happens is the ego is sitting there going, I'm either going to disagree, I'm going to try to dig my heels in and be like, oh, well... You know, that's I, so I, superficial. Yeah, super. Like I'm gonna dig my heels in. I'm gonna play this game. I'm gonna, you know, you get to de you get to decide what do you do with this information now. What Dude, do I do? I tell people You're don't like, shoot the messenger, man. Don't shoot the messenger. It's just a messenger, exactly. It's, it's a message. Now, what you do with that? You can either have an ego. You can do something about it. You can not do something about it. You could say thank you for the feedback. I appreciate you. I may shelve that for later because not a priority yet. Like you get to now take it as slow as you want. And I think so many people get so reactive that they can't process their own life because they're sitting there reacting to everybody else's thing. And it's like, okay, I have bad teeth. I've seen that. I've heard that. And I'm working on a plan to fix that because other things are stepping in front of that right now. But you're conscious of like how you're responding to it. Does that make sense? And besides that, guys, besides that, guys, you got to understand a lot of times when I say, when I say this to people, they go into the mirror and, you know, because of their own self-esteem issues, they think I'm talking to them when their fucking teeth isn't that bad. And that's not who I'm talking about. Nobody on this call, I don't believe qualifies for having bad teeth. Okay. Just so you know, just so you, just so you know, when I'm talking about bad teeth, I'm not talking about, you know, there's a little light haze of yeller. Uh, you know, or, or one's a little crooked or, you know, any of that. I'm talking about, like, dude, are your teeth rotten out of your face? Do you got more teeth missing that looks like your tongue's in jail? Like, if that's the case, I swear to God, I would tell you to go fix it before you do anything else. Like, stop going to parties. Stop networking. Start, stop trying to build relationships. Go fix your teeth. Step one. Like, hey, how do I win? Step one. Fix that damn grill, son. Fix her. Okay, fix it. Um, but the, the four things, comparing mind is, is a is a unhappy mind. Second one is <laughs> let go of control. I would agree with the comparing mind is an unhappy mind for sure. Let go of control, meaning you don't always need to be in control. Stop trying to be always right. And stop trying to look good. Like when you're always trying to look good, you're like when you're in this game of looking good, it's going to hurt and you're going to start taking things so personally because you're like, I'm trying, I'm trying to look good. I'm trying to look good. Can I, can I, can I say something to that though? Yeah. Okay. Go through them again. One at a time. So a comparing mind is an unhappy mind. I agree with that. Like, think about that. Like, well, and again, not to good. not totally because dude, sometimes but I hear what you're saying, and that I agree with. You don't want to compare yourself, dude, period. You want to you compare yourself to yourself, so a compare yeah, yourself is your unhappy game, mind. It's what, like, I'm playing my game. What's the next one? Like, let go of, or don't need to be in control all the time. Okay, don't so need like don't need to be in control all the time, but should be. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> so, so think of it as like when I'm always trying to control everything, that's when I'm going to get unhappy. That's when yeah. I'm going to take things so personally because yeah. it's not going to go exactly how I wanted it to. It's like I can't control the universe and kids and, you know, 
I wanted to jet ski with D last night, but then all these kids jump on the jet ski and it was like, okay, I guess I'm taking kids rides tonight, not a romantic ride tonight. You know what I mean? Like, and I just, I just allowed it. I was like, okay, they need to have some, some fun time. So yeah, but yeah, but thing. Sam, it, hold on because I'm, I'm walking through one, each one. Cause I want to give my opinion on each one. You're, you, you said, you said, uh, you don't always need to be in control. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, so, no, so it's, you can control you, but I'm saying when I'm trying that's to, control it, that's it, that's it. Me, I know, but, but the, yeah. you got, you got to clarify you because you, you yeah, got to yeah. clarify I because be in control of me. you're saying, you're saying, control me. I, I know, but you're saying my thoughts, I can control my actions. I can control my, so you should always be in control. Things, so Sam, you but should always be in control. Be in control. Yeah, you can always be in control of you. The, yeah, you should be. That, you should always be in control. But it's when I'm trying to control everyone else and I'm trying to control the environment around me. I know, we're not talking about that. I'm trying to control the outcome of... Yes, I am in control of Okay, me, so hold on. But so, it's so, need to be in control. Okay, of, we hear you. So what you're saying now is you've, you're reconsidered with new information and now you might agree that you should always be in control. You should not not be in control. You should not not need to be in control. You should always be in control. That's the, that's the truth. I believe again. It's it's just my opinion, but you should always be in control of yourself. You can't control anything else. So, but you should always be in control. Always fucking be in control. Don't fucking get drunk and walk around out of control. Don't get out of control. Get into control. So that when I heard that rule, you don't always need to be in control. Why are, well, I wouldn't teach somebody that. I would teach them the opposite. You need to be in control. You need to stop worrying about shit you can't control, which is really what Sam's saying. But I just showed you guys how I just got Sam to agree. Do you agree? Yeah. See, I just closed his ass. Yeah, I just literally changed. I just literally changed but, his belief. What's the next one? I'm taking. Hold on, Brad. I'm really frustrated because I'm taking this so personal right now. Um, <laughs> Hey, what's the next one? Right? So that's what happens sometimes. I just got called out on a call. It's my call, Brad. I'm the one teaching. You suck. Like, hey. See what I'm getting at? Like, or I can just say thank you. Dude, normally it's your call, but this ain't. This is closer school's call. And that's my call, sucker fish. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying, this is a perfect opportunity for me to say, where's my ego and my response going to come play into this? Be make, beautiful yeah, example. Think, beautiful example if you don't take shit personally. Good. He made bad. So the next one is look good, right? Hey, now, now watch. Hold on, Sam. Let me add to that. Most. Hey, Matt, mute. Hey, let me add to that. Let me add to that. You again? He's he's making fun right now, explaining. But people really do do that. They re really will think. Oh my God, he made me look stupid. Now let me ask you a question. Raise your hand if you think anyone's. If if anyone here thinks Sam's stupid. See, we think someone made us look, listen, we think someone made us look stupid, but, but we don't really believe, I mean, but, but we don't know what people think. One time I was on stage. Some of you guys are afraid to raise your hand because you're like, I'm going to look dumb raising my hand, making Sam look stupid. Sam, one day I brought a guy up on stage and the first thing he did when he got the microphone is apologized how he looked. I stopped him right there and I got the microphone back and I said, let me ask everybody in the audience, honestly and be honest, how many of you thought to yourself Oh my God, I can't believe he wore that. And nobody raised their hand. So he apologized for looking like shit to a thousand people in an audience. And nobody in the audience thought he looked like shit. What the fuck was he apologizing for? So think, think because he that. thought he looked like shit. And, 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 and Raphael, he made a great point. He could be pissed. He could be getting off here. The fucking Brad always trying to one-up me. Or he could fucking not take it personally because all I'm trying to do is, is correct the message and make it a teaching moment because a lot of people get taught, dude, you don't need to be in control. What was the next one? So look good, which we just talked about. So it's like, how often are, are you thinking you look bad when in reality no one raised their hand and said, you look bad? So what's the it's rule? You internal, it's, we call it, so it's, what is look good? Like, just be you, just exist. Just, you know, instead of like needing to look good, let go of that. Okay, I got that one. Now I want to, to look good. I got it. I want to alter that one. So instead of, you don't, you shouldn't feel a need to look good. I want to alter that one to just one rule. Look good. 
Look good. Like it's the opposite of that. You don't need to look good. Just look good. Like you don't try to get something to eat. You either get something to eat or you don't get something to eat. You don't try to get something to eat. So like look good. What does that mean? And and you already said what it means. Be yourself. Be yourself. You are good enough. Like the way you look right now, that's looking good. If if you're totally like almost enlightened and aware and self, you know, aware, you can look good with messy hair. Look, look, fucking. Sometimes Sam walks out with his hair on purpose. I think like almost like he styles it, like he just got out of bed. And and what's funny is everybody thinks it looks good. There, I've heard a million dudes be like, "Fuck, wish I had his hair." Like, you talking about that fucking wiry mess that he pops out? I think he styles it that way just to get the fucking look at me. I'm cool motherfucker look. But hey, but that's my point. Like, dude, you got to look good by being you. So you hit that one right on the head. What was the other one? Be right. Be right. Now, again, you, you shouldn't try to, you don't need to be right. Okay, you don't need to be right, but you can be right. How do you be right? By doing the right thing. What's the right thing? Dude, the right thing is not, in my mind, subjective. Okay? Now, again, someone can make a rule that makes that look wrong. But in my mind, you know what the right thing is. You know how to do the right thing, folks. You were born with it. You know how to do the right thing. So, in my opinion, when you don't need to be right. But guess what? You can be right. Just make yourself right. Who determines if you're right or wrong, Sam? Your next training homework is to go watch the new movie, Puss in Boots, the latest version of Puss in Boots. Hey, Sam, who who decides if you're right or wrong? You do. So make yourself right. So, So, and then somebody might have a different right, and then if you just sit there and combat it, you're like, okay, like, you could be right too. Good. Do you have your right? I have my right. We agree to disagree, but it's like, that's when people take things so personally. It's like, it's when they, when they aren't certain, they're like, they, they're not secure in themselves because they're like, I need to look how they want me to look. And I'm like, that's where you get unfulfilled. So I need you to watch the new Disney movie, put some boots with this version. And I want you to pretend you're the little dog in the movie and take this training and apply it to watching that movie. Okay. Okay. I know that's a weird. I'm, a, I'm gonna but... give you. I'm gonna give you a lesson too. You after you're done watching Puss in Boots, I want you to go get Glen Gary, Glen Ross. Just go watch that movie, Glen Gary, Glen Ross. Okay, we gotta wrap up. I love you guys. Hopefully, this was helpful. Um, we love the shares on social, so just tag us and be like, "Hey, this is what I learned." Um, and then guys, this was the last of the six calls that we're doing. Um, and you know, pay attention to the other events coming up. Like we have, you know, sales bootcamp, recruiting summit, DGCon, Brad's got stuff going on. So just stay in the community, stay part of what we're doing. Um, and we want to support you. We don't want this to be just like the end of this journey. Um, but we would love to stay in touch in the best ways we can. Um, and so feel free to reach out if you guys need things, hit us up on Instagram or whatever, and, uh, want to support you guys and whatever it is. So much love. Andy loves Peace. you guys. Yeah. He, he had his daughter's thing this morning. So he said to share the love and he, he, he uh, he, uh, misses you. He was here in spirit. Love and, you guys. And Mark, I'd rather, I'd rather win than be right. Yes. Peace. You might not be a cleaner. You might not be the person that, 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 can, that can dunk a basketball. But that doesn't mean you can't make a decision. Like, folks, think about it. Everybody here can make a decision. They're not hard to make. You simply make them.